What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next example. So we have to determine the real values of a, b, and c for the quadratic function where f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So just a quadratic in standard form. And it satisfies these conditions. So f of zero is equal to six. The limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to three. And then the limit as x approaches two of f of x is equal to negative four. Now this question, it's actually not too bad. It looks a little bit more complex because we have these limits here. But one thing I want to mention, because we're working with a quadratic, a quadratic, any quadratic or any polynomial for that matter, is continuous for all x values right, from negative infinity to positive infinity. A quadratic is always going to be continuous for all x values or for x, er, x being an element of real numbers. Now, if you remember from the definition of continuity that if a function is continuous at a certain x value, then we know the limit as x approaches a, of that function is equal to f of a. Right from the definition of continuity, if a function is continuous at an x value of a, then that means the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. It's just going to be that point, right? So because a quadratic is going to be continuous, for all x values, then really what we can do is we could take this limit here, limit as x approaches one of f of x, we know, according to this, that this is actually just gonna be the same as f of one. So we can rewrite this as f of one is equal to three. Okay, now you gotta be careful because we can only do this because we're told we're dealing with a quadratic. If we weren't told what kind of function we were dealing with, then we can't assume this. We can't assume this continuity. It might be a function where, let's say, there's a hole there, right? So at an x value of one, there's going to be a hole at this y value of three. So the limit would still exist then. But because we know that a quadratic is continuous for all x values, we know that that point exists there, meaning that the limit is the same as f of one. The limit as x approaches one is the same as f of one because it's continuous. Hence, we could take this and rewrite it like this. And then same thing over here, limit as x approaches two of f of x equal to negative four. Well, because it's continuous, then we know that f of two is also gonna equal negative four, right? And so really what happens now after stating all of that, right, because it's continuous and because of that um, definition of continuity with that limit, we can rewrite this limit as, um, let me write it over here. So it's f of one is equal to three, and then we could rewrite this limit as f of two is equal to negative four. And then we also have f of zero equaling six. Well. All of these we can rewrite as coordinates. So we could take this, we could rewrite as one and three. We could rewrite this as two, negative four, and we could rewrite this as zero and six. So now we got three points that we could plug in here for the X and Y value. And then we'll have three equations, three unknowns that we can solve for, All right? So it's just recognizing how we could take these limits and rewrite them like this because of that continuity of a quadratic. And so from here, just using these points, we can create these equations. So let's start off with, um, let's start off with this point. I feel like this one's gonna be the easiest. So we could plug in six for the y value, and then we would plug in zero for the x values, right? And so notice this whole thing's gonna be zero, this whole thing's gonna be zero. So right away, we know that c is just gonna equal six. So that's one of the solutions. Let's write it over here. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rewrite this quadratic, but instead of the c value, I'm just gonna write plus six like that. 
right? It's nice because this was zero over here. If this was a number, then it would take more work. But we know here that the y-intercept of this quadratic is just going to be 6. So the c value is 6. And now we could just plug in these other points and create two more equations, and we'll have two unknowns to solve for. So let's work with this point. We could plug in 3 for y. We'd have a 1 to the power 2 plus b times 1 plus 6. So 1 to the power 2 is 1 times a is just a plus b. Let's bring the 6 over. 3 minus 6 would give us negative 3. So there's one equation. And then the next equation, we could plug in uh, negative 4, 4y. Four then we'd have a 2 to the power 2 plus b times 2 plus 6. So we'd have 2 to the power 2 times a, so it's 4a plus 2b. Bring the 6 over. Negative 4 minus 6 gives us negative 10 like that. And then we could simplify this further. Notice we could actually divide everything by 2, right? So we'd have negative 5 equals 2a plus b like that. So we got two equations, two unknowns that we could solve for. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to write these equations up here. And let's do some substitution and elimination. Actually, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll do elimination. So I'll write this. And then I'll write this below it. And then I'm going to subtract this from this here. There's different ways you could solve these. Right, whichever way you do it, just make sure you're getting that same a and b value that I'm going to get. So we could subtract these to get rid of these b values. So we'd have b minus b is 0, 2a minus 1a gives us just a. And then negative 5 minus negative 3 is like negative 5 plus 3, which gives us negative 2, right? We're subtracting all of this here. So you got to distribute that negative to the negative 3 to make it a positive we end up with negative 2. So the a value is just negative 2. Then we can solve for the b value either here or here. Let's use this second one. So we'll plug in uh, negative 2 for a. Bring the negative 2 over. Negative 3 plus 2 would give us the b value. The b value would be negative 1. And we're done. So the a value is negative 2. The b value is negative 1. The c value is 6. So the quadratic ends up being negative 2x squared minus x, right? Minus 1 here for the b value plus 6, right? So that quadratic there satisfies these conditions. So not too bad, just more so understanding how we can use that definition of continuity, first recognizing that we're dealing with a continuous function for all x values, and then using that definition of continuity to take these limits and then rewrite them as these points over there.